were good. Nice. So yeah, actually, yeah. Nice. So this yeah, they, they sell you the taco. Yeah, it was good today. From where? Normally it tastes like something uh, you find under a fucking car tire after yeah. you send it through the worst <laughs> parts of town, like Skid Row. Wow. Yeah. Wait, in West, that's where'd you find? School lunch. School lunch. Oh, it's school lunch. Yeah. It was actually pretty good today. Never nice. heard someone express school lunch of they're Ohio, selling. Ohio. Well, because the UR, they are selling it. I know, but like I just never heard something like that. Like they're selling good. All right. So yeah, uh, now only three members today. Um, Cadets. Thank you, Moises, for coming in. Hello, yeah, of course. Hello. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're continuing on from last time. This is where we were. We have, of course, quite a lot of material. We have uh, six years to get through. Um, so yes. Damn, six years ago, it's ten. It's 1938, and there is German expansion. Um, there's a huge German military buildup, as well as the remilitarization of occupied zones. And they built fortifications on the French border. Yes. Real quick, I have a hypothesis why people aren't here yet. Because they didn't see that it, was, that it started at 1250, so I think it's always going to start at 1.5. Yeah, maybe. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, next. What was called Anschluss, which just means the jo uh, joining or annex, which uh, the Germans sent Austria a referendum, basically a giant vote to the people saying, "Do you want to become part of Germany?" And they said yes, so they became part of Germany. Um, not really that simple. Well, not that simple, but that's the lot. That's the breakdown of it, I guess. Um, and the Germans uh, justify this by saying that uh, Austrians are also Germans. And uh, Great Britain basically let this slide. Now, where are we? Where are we hearing this again? <laughs> yeah. Moving on, there was the annexation of Czechoslovakia with the Munich Agreement when Hitler, Mussolini, Chamberlain. No, I'm not sure who that is. Wait, Chamberlain from England? Chamberlain, yeah. And they let it slide. They let it slide. Um, so basically, they uh, took Sudan, and that's like the more German part of Czechoslovakia, the border of Germany. And then Germany awarded the first Vienna Award to Hungary. I'm not sure why, but uh, Hungary then annexed southern Czechoslovakia. And then uh, Germany just came in and occupied the rest of it. So I'll be damned. So, so far, here's where we are. And they want to push towards Poland. They want more lands, of course with this appeasement from the Allies. Um, and they are looking to claim Danzig this little bit, um, sure you can let the Polish corridor thrown around a lot. That's what that is. Um, and with a lot of German pressure towards Poland, and now Allies are pressuring Germany where they're putting a stop to this appeasement. But from this, there was the molotov ribbentrop Pact between the Soviet Union and Germany where they had a non-aggression pact, which means they will not be aggressive towards each other. Um, and that they will partition Poland uh, between each other in an agreement that both sides will declare war on Poland. Um, and so with this, uh, the Allies were very much uh, not particularly optimistic. And from this, there was the outbreak of war. Huh. This, Germany invades Poland. They sent the official declaration on September 1st. Maybe not even an official declaration, but they declared war on September 1st. Is there a question about this or no? I was going to mention, but I, I'll, I'll mention it once you get to that part. Okay. Um, Sorry about that. It's all right. Uh, the Allies declared war two days later, um, not on Poland, on Germany. And the Soviet Union declared war on Poland on September 17th. Uh, quite a, a couple weeks later. And from this, there is an uh, occupation of Poland. There was a lot of, there was a lot of resistance from the Poles, uh, but Poland was completely occupied in October, only a month later. And 21.4% of the entire population of Poland had died from that war, which is quite a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know the exact figures, but from this, the partition of Poland, um, here it is afterwards, the orange and red, being the Soviet Union, the blue and purple being uh, Germany. And 
and so Germany occupies the West, so the Union occupies the East, and some other territories had been claimed. Like this little bit from Romania uh, on the Soviet Union, we also got a little bit from Romania, uh, and also Ukraine, here. mostly uh, Ukraine and Belarus got those areas in Poland. Now, from this point on, there was the, what's called the phony war, when, well, not really no real war occurs, but no battles, any fighting really takes place at this time between the, uh, 1939 to the start of 1940. But this allows for Germany to continue to build up its military and, um, and, and for the Allies to create defensive plans from the Germans. Yeah. But from then, in 1940, there was the invasion of France. Uh, of course, the famous, uh, going, uh, famous Schlieffen plan, going around the Maginot Line. So if you don't know, the Maginot Line is a French-German border here. With, it is extremely fortified. Like it is really, you don't really know how fortified it is until you see a picture of it. Just imagine a hill, and just artillery pieces and machine guns inside the hill shooting at you. Was that the thing that you did in the biopsy? Yeah, yeah that. that's the thing I did. Anyways, here's, here's the um, kind of evolution of the plan that they had. But it was an offensive, uh, offensive around the imaginal line to not face that, moving through the low countries. And it was uh, mostly a plan to concentrate armor to break through uh, the Allied lines and create kind of surprise. Yes, shock and break the enemy. And so, of course, there's the Blitzkrieg of the Low Nations, of course, this is when it first started. Um, and there was an extensive use of armor here. And what people don't realize is that at this point, actually, the majority of the German tanks were Czech tanks from uh, Czechoslovakia. Um, Czechoslovakia actually had some of the, one of, at the time before their annex, had one of the biggest uh, tank corps um, in the world, almost. And so when Germany annexed them, they annexed all of their tanks, and now all these Czech tanks were in the German army. And so not most of the tanks advancing on France and the Low Countries were not Panzers, but Czech tanks. Um, but a lot of the French tanks were still World War I models. Uh, most of them were what's called FT-17s, developed in 1917. Little tanks that go book, 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 book across the countryside at a couple of kilometers an hour with a little machine gun, and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not, so not looking great, great for France. And of course, this led to the uh, famous evacuation of Dunkirk. There was a great movie quite a few years ago uh, about it. I thought that was last year. Last year? No. no. Oh, you're talking about Dunkirk. Are you talking? Uh, I think you're thinking of 1914. 1917. Yeah. yeah. They're very. They're similar. No, oh, no. There was there was yeah. the recent Dunkirk one that was directed by Kenneth. Whatever his last name is. Maybe, I'll, maybe. Uh, yeah, anyways, there was, I call it like a, a, a double gamble almost, where the Allies had gambled that the Germans would attack in the north in the Netherlands and northern Belgium. So they concentrated their forces up here and left this area open, where this was uh, extremely dense forest and hills. And the Germans gambled by sending most of their army through here and so the German gamble paid off, the Allied gamble did not, and so the Germans, meeting little resistance, were able to get through there. And another French strategy was to spread out all their armored forces across uh, the area rather than concentrate them. Where so a concentrated German tank force uh, meant a extremely non-concentrated uh, French tank force. And so of course this encirclement happened, and uh, all the Allied forces were encircled in the Low Countries and cut off from the rest of France. Um, there you go. Famous evacuation of uh, Dunkirk. Now from then there was, of course, the capitulation of France, soon after France fell, and Vichy France was set up as a puppet state. It mostly took, um, had control of southern France and left the rest of it to Germany. And also Vichy France held northern Africa, or the, the French northern African territories for the Germans. And um, defense of the land was built and set up on uh, the coastline, or the French coastline to the English camp. And um, during the time of, uh, of 
the German is going around the national line with the invasion of Denmark and Norway to gain, of course, gain territory and better access to the North Sea, which is the sea between Norway, uh, Denmark, and England. Uh, Denmark surrendered in six hours after the after their war started. Oh, damn. Um, yeah, and Norway surrendered uh, after two months. And after, so Germany had control of Scandinavia mostly. It's still it's still interesting how Denmark only lasted six hours. I mean, it could be, yeah, whatever. They always make jokes about France surrendering immediately, but yeah, <laughs> Denmark. I mean, um, uh, France has done it repeatedly, but then... Oh, that's true, course. though. Because there's World War... Oh, sorry, never mind. Yeah, yeah. Um, soon after that, there was an invasion of Greece and Yugoslavia in uh, the Balkans. Yes, Balkans. Mm -hmm. Here is a map here of Yugoslavia. Um, it's just a big country of most of the Slavics. Of course, like Serbia and Croatia, Bosnia, whatever. All in one country. Uh, they were not very happy together. But they were together. Uh, and of course, Greece. And as you can see, this is not a great position with pretty much everyone around them, German allies. Yeah. Yeah, not that very good. Um, and of course, this would be better access to the Adriatic Sea and the Mediterranean Sea from Europe, as well as just giving more territory and assistance for Italy, because early on, Italy declared war on Greece and failed miserably. So mm -hmm. Germany had to help and then get help to Greece had to get through Yugoslavia. Italy just needed a little bit of help. <laughs> yes. For the second time help. in the same century. Yeah. Um, so yes, of course, earlier attack of Greece by Italy in 1940. The Germans came in 1941. Uh, and so, of course, they, they needed German assistance and had to get through Yugoslavia. And after mere days, Yugo Yugoslavia surrendered. Their army collapsed because of all the different ethnic groups fighting with each other, the army high command not wanting any um, conflict. So they surrendered as soon as they could, pretty much. But the invasion of Greece, uh, they lasted just about nine months in total, uh, which is, I, th I say, quite a lot. Um, and they- Is that the Parthenon? Yeah. Um, and they had much greater uh, resistance than expected by the Germans. What's up, bitches? What's up? You're late. <laughs> I was at a meeting, I'll have you know. Yeah. So see, we got an excuse. Yes. Yeah. So you know. Important wizard I finally made it. Yeah. Like church. Say hi to the camera. Oh, right shit. There. Oh. Um, <laughs> Say. Hey, Marley. Come hey, over Marley. here. Oh, okay. Yeah, Marley wants a meeting, too. Yeah, I was like, I'm going to get my bag. Oh, guys. Earthquake drill at 30. Just so I let you know. 130? Yes. Oh, okay. I'll have to push this right to the minute, then. Of course they don't. <laughs> you and all your hats. Nothing under of course. Go, go, go. <laughs> yes. Invasion of Greece. Um, we'll move on from there. So do you know Hitler had a gray lo uh, gay lover? That no. is very interesting. Whoa. That is, I don't Ooh. know why Like he was that. gay or he had someone Stalin? who he was in love with you or he had a affair with someone who was gay? I don't know, I, I saw it in some movie. I don't know if he's the gay lover. And it was a no, Barbie like, museum. Was he gay or was the person he was the lover gay? Both of them. Oh. Yeah. One of them wouldn't be gay. The fucking no, door handle like <laughs> messed up my ring a little. Oh. So it's like Hitler being gay and forcing somebody else to be gay, even though they're straight. Hitler was gay? Yeah. Didn't yeah. he also kill the gays, though? I didn't know. He yeah, was he did. And the Jews, and the Polish. Well, I know that's that just being And his girlfriend. <laughs> his high school, uh, middle school crush. He oh, killed his middle school, school crush. Yeah. yeah, well, he was psychotic to be fair. Yeah, you didn't have a crush I, on me that back just, 15 that just years ago, me. bitch. I should have I should have said uh, we're not going to cover everything because it's too much. Like the Battle of the Atlantic, um, the so, Holocaust, unfortunately, it's just too much. Well, the we biggest thing in World War Two. Yeah. We're not going to we're not going to cover what literally everyone thinks that when so they think of World War Two. Yeah. yeah. Well, How does that that's happen? like talking you about cars without talk talking about, about engines <laughs> or <laughs> uh, uh, seating. I'm sorry. Um, it's, it, it goes, yeah. Um, that's like discussing. Uh, uh, so just that as a topic for another time. That's like discussing literature and not discussing. Like how to read. How to read <laughs> Romeo or uh, yeah, yeah. Hamilton, any other. Hamilton. 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 Hamlet. Hamlet, yes, thank you. I mean, part of it was, uh, 
I mean, like, when we studied World War II at Wildwood, like, that was all it was. It was just a it holocaust. Just a, well, it was a holocaust. We were learning about World War II. We learned how it started, and then the we The holocaust, holocaust could have its own series, though. Yeah, that's what I'm, 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 I was planning on putting it up for another time. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, no, exactly. We can't cover everything, because it is too much. I'm we just already learned about we're the, already the holocaust in ninth grade. I know. Which I have plus. a fact about the holocaust, actually. Okay. Well, we have a lot of material to get through, so. Yeah. Let, let me just speak. So I got one more problem left, so I think okay. that's also important. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> yes, with the Greek resistance, they uh, delayed the German invasion of Russia, which gave Russia some more time to prepare for it, and of which Greece is still uh, on, uh, is still upon to, to this day, yeah. Was Russia expecting Germany to invade them? Yeah. Um, they were suspicious about it, yeah. Yeah, it was um, inevitable. Yeah, with uh, Hitler touting on how he's going to end communism in the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, might, they might have a little... Plot twist, he was also a communist. He was a fascist. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, the Greek resistance of the partisans protected the Allied evacuation of Greece and from then tied up um, hundreds of thousands of garrison troops of the Germans that would have been fighting on the Russian front. So yes, um, moving into the Africa campaign. Uh, if probably the different changed. outfit for each place. I mean, you know the Holocaust was kind of a really central part, so yeah. Um, yeah. Not, not mentioning it is kind of big. That's a little odd, man. And considering literally like in the military campaigns, they had like, they had like burned down villages and stuff. Who would Magnus wear like striped pajamas? <laughs> The boy striped pajamas. I'll have to, yeah, I'm going to have to get striped pajamas when I talk about the Holocaust. Why? Oh. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. I brain farted for a second there. Yeah. Uh, no, do no, not. No, don't, no. Don't do that. Don't I'll do have that. to verbally no. mention it later. Anyways. Don't, don't do that, Max. What is this? No, I can't. Okay. My facade of desert uniform. What was Africa campaign. No. Yes. You okay? What's happening? All well, my work just got deleted. For what? Oh, wow. File. F. After the chat. Oh, battles seven. over sand. What? They fought over sand? Well, kind of. Yeah. What is human history? <laughs> yes, um, they only fought. Me. Guys, I did it. I completed math. Good for you. Good job. Cool. Sorry about Sid, though. Wait, did you, like, pull him out of his tab or something? I didn't. Guys, guys. Yeah. So. And we, they fought near the coastline. It was roughly two miles away from the coastline because any farther down what was, uh, became what was called a wadi. And a wadi. Oh, this is me sneaking in. Hello, Holly. Hello. And what a wadi. Battles was, over sand. Yes. And what a wadi was was when in the desert, uh, water was running under the ground and made all of the ground really mushy and watery. Ooh. And so if you try and walk or drive over it, <laughs> you're going to sink. Um, Pick a heavy tank. Yes. <laughs> so you you couldn't move an army through the wadi. Simply fly. Um, so they just fought near the coastline. Why did they just fly over it? Well, can you fly a tank over it? You can fly a plane over it. You can fly a plane with bombs over Who are it. Who are you gonna fight if well, there's no one on the sand? There wouldn't be any point to have go from the airfield down this way and back when you could just go that way. No, I mean like if there were people lower down. No one is gonna be there. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> no, you said they weren't fighting. Oh, welcome to my world where the people don't listen to all the things. Yeah. You, said they were, you said they weren't fighting, not that there were no people. Well, if they're not going to be fighting there, there would be no people there. Because there's no army there, because they're not fighting yes. there. Doesn't mean there's not people there. Yes. There's people Same. everywhere. Inland Wadi. So they fought roughly two miles away from the coastline. That is extremely thin. That might be about this, this <laughs> thick of front line. Um, and also extreme stress of logistics and camouflage. Like, not only fighting in the desert is it hard to move guns there, but imagine having to move water. You have to have huge pipe lines pumping water to the front line. And also camouflage. It's hard to hide things in the desert. You know, they just the, built a pipeline? Yeah, they just you built a pipeline. Yeah. And it's a different one thing. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and of course, yes. Uh, the, I mean, the British did develop camouflage for Europe with... Uh, Bush disguises for tanks, where you could have this tarp, well not a tarp, black tank, you get it on your tank, it has all this 
uh, shrubbery on it, and it looks like a bush from an airplane. So if you're in Europe, you have bush, bush, bush. Any of those could have been a tank. But if you're in a desert, you see sand, sand, a bush. That's bush that might be a tank. So their camouflage for the desert didn't quite work out so well, which is why they use pink, because pink somehow blends, or doesn't somehow, but it just blends in more naturally with a hot climate and the sand. I just love when my bushes start moving. Yes. Everybody gains until the bushes start moving. <laughs> yes. Um, also clarify, this is a British tank with a captured Italian flag, if anyone notices it. Yes, it's a British tank. Um, anyways. British um, tank, is it? British tank. It's called a Crusader. <laughs> Um, and yeah, they, they captured a British flag from the Battle of Gallipoli, uh, no, not Gallipoli, uh, the Battle of Tobruk. Um, anyways, this, uh, the Western African campaign was when the Germans pushed west, uh, pushed, no, pushed, um, well, the, the British had the uh, Western African campaign. Um, it's when the Germans had pushed eastward to the Suez Canal, and they want to control the Suez Canal. And also, it would give them greater control of the Mediterranean Sea, having a full encompass, uh, encompassing of it, except for Gibraltar and Malta. Um, and this is vastly important for Britain's survival because it is their, their once uh, passage to all their colonies, like India, Australia, New Zealand, um, Malay well, Malaysia is under occupation of Japan at the time. Well, they did eventually just decolonize after World War II, so... Well, yeah, but all the... really that important. Grudgingly. But, like, they got a lot of supplies and troops from their colonies at the yeah. time. And then after the war ended, they, like... Decolon yeah. yeah. But the if they were cut off from their colonies during the war, then uh, it would not have been good for Britain. So, uh, we're going to have two important battles. The first one is the Siege of Tribuk. Um, and with an extraordinarily multinational photo here. Um, and it occurred after a German counterattack in Northern Africa. When, um, and this was an allied defense of the port city Tobruk, which um, even which stressed German logistics, where the allies held Tobruk and they were encircled by the Germans, and the front line was farther, uh, farther east. Um, it was mostly held up by an Australian force, but also forces from Czech troops, Indian troops, New Zealand troops, many different nationality troops. Um, and this was very important because it was the closest port to the front line for the Germans. And so if the Allies held it, it means the Germans could use the port to import supplies to the front line. And so this halted the German offensive for the time being of the siege. And from this, the Allies were able to recover from the counterattack and counter counter attack. And here, we have the Second Battle of El Alamein, uh, which is uh, also important. It's what's called the beginning of the end. Um, it was Churchill had a famous speech of beginning of the end, when he said after this battle, it was the beginning of the end for the German war machine. Um, not particularly because it was like a, it was a really decisive battle, but if you look at a graph of all the battles fought in World War II. You see, if you have British victories, the higher it is, the more the British are winning, the lower the West are winning. So at the start of the war, it's here, and then it kind of goes down, down, the British are losing, then boom, at the very bottom we have LLMA, and then from there, it, like, it goes back, back up. So it's not really the beginning of the end, but it's the beginning of when the British started winning. More, that is. Um, and of course, this had a lot of armored engagements, because if you look at all of this flat desert, um, and to get across it quickly, you can use tanks, and with a lot of tanks moving around, with all this flat land and a lot of visibility, uh, but except when there's dust storms, uh, there's a lot of armored engagements. And also a battle for air superiority. With all this plain land, you can't really hide very well under what? I think that's planes. I didn't deny that there weren't planes. They didn't deny they didn't I, you said, why, why didn't they fly over the, the wadi? I'm just so saying, no they, they didn't have planes flying. I didn't say it. They didn't. They never said they did have planes. <laughs> I said they wouldn't fly over the wadi. Here we go again. Wadi. The wadi? The wadi. It's an uh, area in the desert when there's water flowing under the ground, and it gets oh, to the ground yeah. above. Yeah. Yeah. It's because you couldn't move an army through there, and there'd be no point to get planes over that. But anyways. Uh, when you have all this flat ground and a lot of visibility, 
Uh, plans become really important because they can see a lot more and they can bomb a lot more. So plans are would be are substantially more important in the desert. Now moving away from Africa. Yeah. Now I want to mention what I was going to mention earlier. Yes, what were we going to mention? I don't know if you put this picture in there by chance, but I remember seeing a picture of the moment someone had told Stalin that the uh, Germans had started their invasion. Have you seen that picture? I don't think so. The, there's it's a, not interesting. It, it's a very interesting photo. He's sitting down slumped over with a big old cigar in his hand. Wow. I think. I'm pretty sure he looks like that like 90% of the <laughs> Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so yes, Operation Barbarossa is uh, very famous. Because Operation Barbarossa, uh, here's a map of, the, of Europe at the time that it, or just before it occurred. Um, and it is considered the largest land invasion in history. Of course, Napoleon invaded Russia, but you know, Napoleon kind of came through this way. Germ uh, Germany invaded through this distance from the Black Sea to the Baltic Sea. Uh, very large distance. And so, yes, the, land, the largest land invasion in history. Wait, where are they, where's the invasion line? Like, where are they? Which, which uh, color? From the Black Sea yeah. through this line up to the Baltic Sea. Wait, wait where are they invading them? What? Like, which color? Uh, all this, all, the gray. all this, and also all this, oh. going here. Yeah. yeah, and of course this would expand if, if you were to move this line, and move along the coastline, it would be pretty big. It was a pretty big front line, and of course there's more in the middle too. Yeah. So this was also a huge turn in the war, because you know, at this time, if you're Great Britain, and you see uh, this, is, this is all German, this is occupied by Germany, soon this is going to be occupied by Germany, all this is occupied by Germany. It doesn't look very good for Britain. Mm -hmm. So it looks like the Germans are winning, but at this point, not at this point, but uh, from this further on, there's a huge turn in the war. Uh, yes, a little point of the Allies. So with the initial invasion, uh, German, um, German, singular, this German has huge success. <laughs> a one-man job. Anyways, yeah, they have huge success at first, um, having large encirclements of Russian forces, capturing a lot of people, putting them into the internment camps, and of course, sorting them out. Right? Yes, with the Holocaust, all those in Poland. I'm, I'm definitely trying to make an effort to mention We're just going to casually skip over the Holocaust. Yeah, I'll definitely put it as a topic, because that is very important. Although, well, we are that's like a multi deep topic. Yeah, Nikita. So in the East Coast, I mean, not East Coast, but then on the Eastern Front, it was actually different. Um, they didn't, instead of concentration camps, they had mobile sort of killing squads. So it's, yeah, uh, we yeah. took notes on that last It's year. called the uh, Holocaust by Bullets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. The point would use bayonets <laughs> uh, to save ammunition. Anyways, um, so yes, at first, the Germans are seemingly on top. They're at the doorstep of Moscow, Stalingrad, and Leningrad, three uh, majorly important cities in the Soviet Union. What is Grad? Like, and, like, what does ending your name with Grad mean? I don't know. It's, it's like probably just it means the, town, like city. Oh, yeah. so Stalin, like Stalin town, yeah. Lenin town. <laughs> now, it now it's called Petersburg, and uh, I don't know what Stalingrad is called now. Uh, it's called. Well, whatever. We only have seven minutes left. I need to get to the rest of this. So, uh, of course, winter, um, and the offensive grinds to a halt, and um, it's because and it's because of the bottleneck railway system, the Russian railway system centers around major cities like Kiev, and so shipping from Germany, you have all these shipments of many different lines, like maybe assume there's ten lines, and then they converge at one point. It's like the exit of Dodger Stadium. It is, <laughs> it is, it, yeah. So oh, that's accurate. <laughs> yeah, so you can't get supplies through, and there's, uh, yeah, of course, issues with logistics. Um, and from this, the Russians were able to uh, bounce back, and they had a huge counteroffensive. This, I love this photo, because half a second later, he, he was blown up. Oh, damn. Um, How do you know? How do you know? I, I've, seen, I've seen this photo, I've done the research behind it. It was the second officer calling for the counterattack, then a mortar shot hit here somewhere and killed him immediately. Um, and I heard the photographer was uh, also injured. And it was believed, it, the camera was visually destroyed 
but the film inside was somehow preserved, and I mean, this photo was saved. It's pretty good quality photo, not gonna lie. Yeah. Oh, well, he, did well, he shoot a flare yeah. off? Talk to Moses before death. He was just like, he just like waving, uh, whatever. But anyways, yes, reinforced Soviet army. Uh, they pushed back against the weakened German army, and the tide turns, it seems. Oh, how the tide turns, turns. Well, this. <laughs> and Japan messed up with that one. Yeah. Um, and so this, of course, washes away the huge anti-war sentiment. Yes. I love a good joke. Do you know why there are no fat people in Japan? Oh, God. Oh, boy. Uh, they don't sleep. Because the last time there was a fat man in oh. Japan, the <laughs> city disappeared. <laughs> uh, oh. Anyways, America begins to participate in Europe and Asia now, after this, and they start uh, a Pacific campaign. Now, on a hopping campaign, they start reclaiming islands, releasing, uh, uh, reasserting Pacific naval dominance, and liberating Southeast Asian countries from this, the, the Battle of Saipan, with extreme resistance, extraordinarily high yeah. civilian casualties, and many Japanese civilians committed suicide rather than be captured by American forces. Seppuku. Yes, uh, Battle of Okinawa, uh, final island in the campaign, um, yet even more extreme resistance and extraordinarily high uh, American casualties. Uh, from this, we have the landing in Europe and Africa with the Tehran Conference, when the, uh, the end is uh, hard to doubt, uh, for Germany that is, and it discuss how to divvy up Germany uh, to start the Cold War. Uh, off, not in the, with the intention to start it, but it started after World War II. And Stalin demands a Western front be opened up uh, in France from a naval invasion, but uh, the Allies declined because they don't want to. But they did Operation Torch when they invaded Northern Africa through naval invasion, and, and they tried to get a pincer um, action against Axis. Because if we have Egypt here, the Axis is in the middle, we have a landing here, they want to converge in the middle, pinch them out of Africa, uh, like Acme. The horn? Um, so, the, na the, 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 the naval invasion of Sicily, southern Italy, the famous song of the belly speech, not speech, but it was mentioned in the speech of uh, Churchill. The capitulation of Italy, uh, the end comes even closer, uh, D-Day, uh, yes. Um, in the end of it all, we quickly go over the fall of Berlin, uh, Soviet win the race to Berlin, Germany surrenders sometime after, dropping of uh, why there's no fat men in, Jap in Japan anymore, as it says. Um, and th they contemplated an invasion of the mainland, but they said, nope, there will be millions of dead Americans, so let's just have millions of dead Japanese people instead. Um, and then there comes the end of the war. Sources. Uh, yeah, that's my grandfather. He fought in the war. Just like, oh, wait, can you go back? Can I go back? Yeah, why? So that's why you use Thomas in biology. Wait, where is your grandpa? Thomas <laughs> I thought you had that photo. No. Um, anyways, you have to vote really quickly. All right. Uh, uh, Cold War. Cold Genghis War. Khan. Genghis Khan. Okay, Cold wait. War. Raise your hand for Cold War. Two. Uh, no, wait. No! Shannon, no. Okay, wait. Okay, raise your hand for Cold no, War. Two. Okay, I don't two, know. two for Cold War. Genghis Khan. One. Two. I want Cold War. Come on, Shannon. You don't know? I want Cold War. You want Cold no, War? No, yes, no, 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 no. Yes! yes. Okay. Genghis Khan, runner up. Genghis Khan, come on. Uh, Genghis Khan. Okay. okay, after next week's topic, I'm going to open up a channel on the Discord server where you can put up your own Ooh. Um, Ooh. topic. And Ooh. whatever gets the most votes in the Discord server, I'll put as a fourth topic, and we can vote on that in the meeting. Oh, yeah. Anyways, yeah, we have a quick tool. Anyways, so yeah, uh, look out for that. I'll put the instructions there. And we'll be doing one more next year, or next, 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 next week, next week, next week. Thanks, 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 Yep. See you guys. I'm just gonna kill, kill some time. I'm just gonna kill, I'm gonna chill here until you send it off. I have to eat.